Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon. Happy Friday to you guys. So today this reading is really gonna be for whoever it resonates for. Anybody that happens to run across this video, anybody that is just open to the messages that Spirit has for you today, just take what resonates, okay? We're not going to ask any specific questions. We're literally gonna let the cards be our guide and tell a story for us. Okay, so I'm asking that spirit come through with anything that is meant for the viewer. And if something doesn't resonate for you, you guys don't have to take it. Okay, so all the decks will be listed down below as well as all of these beautiful organites that are created by my friend Michelle from Wing and Bell. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start off with, you know, just a topic. So again, whatever spirit wants to bring through, we will continue on with the energy. Ooh, we have the, sorry, that was my... <laughs> that was my dryer timer. We have Detach from Drama. I may not know how to say all these names correctly, but I'm going to try. We have Pallas Athena. So Detach from Drama. Is there a situation in our lives or some sort of drama that's attached to other situations or other people that we may need to detach from? So Spirit wants to bring forth a message about this. So let's go ahead and get a couple more details about detaching from some sort of drama, something that may just not be good for us in our lives. Oh, we have the evil queen. Interesting. So to me, there's kind of like this evil energy here. Um, you know, we may need to protect ourselves, you guys. There could be somebody here that is uh, giving you kind of salty energy when really you deserve sugar. So it says evil queen, uh, you deserve sugar, not salt. So if someone is just being nasty, or it could even just be here that something triggers the salt in you and you deserve really to be in the energy of sugar. So it's not like you can't feel anything negative. If something's coming up for you, you've got to kind of figure out why that is. It's not about lying to ourselves and it's not about shoving things down and pretending they're not there. We do need to look at something and say, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel jealous? Why do I feel, feel triggered? That's if it's you. And also this kind of applies to another person as well. People don't just act this way for no reason. There's usually a reason. Now, it doesn't mean that just because there's a reason that we have to accept it, but we don't have to take it as, you know, so so personal. Sometimes taking things so personal, that's our own trauma, that's our own pain. And so we are being asked to just kind of see things from everyone's perspective. But the thing is, if someone is in this energy, you are still being asked to detach from them or just cut communication with them or just no longer you know, participate with this madness. So this palace Athena is saying it's time to detach from an evil queen or it's time to detach from something that's triggering you and maybe work on that wound or try to, try to kind of figure out why you're feeling this way towards someone. So let's go ahead and get a tarot card. Okay, so we have the Six of Cups, you guys. So I do have to say when the Six of Cups shows up that this could be somebody from your past, like you're feeling um, nostalgic. You are um, maybe perhaps ruminating from a past situation. And this could be something where you're being asked to detach from it because it's actually bringing more of a salt energy. It's kind of like pouring salt in the wounds. I'm getting that from spirit as well. We're pouring salt in the wounds. It's time for us to stop. It's time for us to detach from our past. And it's time for us to move forward in our um, present moment and future. But we can't do this as long as we're holding on to the past. This could also be childhood, you guys, because the, the Six of Cups is connected to childhood. So any kind of childhood wounds or dramas, let's just say some of you guys have a mother wound. Um, we're being asked to address this and to, to figure out how we can experience a little bit more sweetness in our life. Okay. Cause there's something that's kind of salty and bittery here in a wound, salt in the wounds I'm seeing here. And it's time for us to detach from that energy. So what else do we need to understand and know? Okay. So we have uh, prayers and wishes. Wow, so some of you guys are praying for uh, help. Some of you are praying for assistance. You see that sun in the background there. So I feel like the sun will rise in your life once again. Maybe your prayer has not been answered uh, yet or it hasn't been answered in the way that you had hoped, but sometimes our prayers are actually answered, but we're not paying attention. Um, we're not seeing the blessing in disguise here. 
Um, so if you guys have prayed for, let's just say, someone to return from the past and it hasn't happened, the fact that this person has not returned could be the answer, as in maybe it's not the right time, maybe it's not good for you, um, or maybe it's time some something f is forcing us to address a uh, past pain, past energy, past trauma, past wound here. So your prayers are being answered is what I'm actually getting here. You ha may have wished for something, but the answer is if something is hurting you or not feeling good or, f or feels bitter or feels painful, it's time for you to address um, maybe why you're still attached to it or why you're still wanting to participate with it, okay? So the, the answer is it's time to detach from the drama. It's time to detach from this salty situation. Um, if something isn't making you feel good, it's time to detach. That's what I'm seeing here. So let's go ahead and get a spell card here. Okay, we have trust. I like this because this is telling you to trust in your higher power. Whatever that is to you. Trust in your higher power. Say, I am safe. I am secure. In love, I trust. My faith endures. So your faith and your trust in your higher power is needed at this time. If certain things are not happening or happening, it is not happening or happening for a reason. And we have to trust this. Sometimes that's very difficult. Sometimes we feel like we know best. And if that doesn't resonate for you, you don't have to take it. But I am a firm believer that whatever we are going through, even if it's suffering, even if things are not happening the way that we would like them to, there is a good reason for it. And sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes that's hard to accept. But our best bet is to detach from anything that is really just not serving us in a positive way anymore. Some sort of past pain and things may have served you, as in it it made you stronger. It helped you to realize a thing or two about yourself. But there is something about it's time now to detach and move forward. The salt, it's just salt in the wound at this point. It's time for us to start putting some sugar on these wounds. And again, we're not doing this by pretending that the pain isn't there. We're not, you know, saying love and light, I forgive all if we don't feel that way. So if we're not feeling that way, it might be Spirit's way of also suggesting to us that it might be time for us to maybe seek an expert in the field of trauma and wounds. Um, we may need to go deeper into our healing, okay? But I feel like a lot of you guys are ready to detach from something that just you know doesn't feel good for you anymore. And um, again, if that does not resonate for you, you do not have to take it. But I feel like whoever's ready to receive that message trust and have faith in your higher power um, that you are being led in the direction of this sunnier energy here you're, you're you're being led to the light at the end of the tunnel and the only way to that light is to detach from something whatever that is okay so that is the first message so that could have resonated for you and if it didn't there could be another message a totally separate message here for you so let's go ahead and keep going Ooh, I love this. We have Mother Mary. Nurture yourself. Take care of you. Sometimes we forget to do that. Sometimes we are busy being mothers or maybe just caretaking, taking care of everyone else's needs but our own. So we're being asked to um, kind of mother ourselves, to nurture ourselves, to step into the energy of self-care, self-love. That's beautiful. Let's see what else. And we have the princess. Ooh, you can be your own knight. I really love this. So I, I feel like this is a very empowering message. You can be your own provider, okay? As in you don't necessarily need another person outside of yourself. It can just be you and your higher power. Um, or it could just be you and your independent energy providing for your own needs at this time. Mothering yourself, caring for yourself. I think that's very beautiful. Be the two of pentacles. So the two of pentacles can be an energy here where we're kind of going back and forth with something. Maybe we're uh, kind of a little in a toss up right now. We don't exactly know what direction things are, or what direction or where 
where the direction of our lives or something is headed. Um, but the thing is, we're taking a look at these things and we're, you know, just tossing some things around, maybe tossing some ideas around, you know, uh, some of us could be a little confused. And so we're just kind of trying to figure it all out right now. And that's okay because sometimes we just need some time. We need some time to figure things through. Okay, and we have go with the flow. That's beautiful energy. I love this deck because it has a cat in every single deck. And Sharky, she kind of looks like Sharky. <laughs> Anyways, so go with the flow, you guys. This is a time for you to, um, if that previous message resonated for you, detach from the drama, take care of yourself. Instead of pouring salt in the wounds, take some time to lick your wounds, kind of examine your life and where you kind of feel maybe stuck, and um, just at least get in the boat and start paddling forward. You know, doesn't have to be an aggressive change, but go with the flow is just kind of at least, at least get in the boat. Okay. So it's kind of like this vision that I'm getting. You're here on land, feeling a little stuck. I don't know where to go. And spirit is nudging you and saying, at least get off the dock into the boat. And when you take that step to at least get in the boat, you're trusting you're going with the flow. You're allowing the waters of life, the natural rhythm of life to take you to the next step. But it does require you to at least get in the boat. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing here. Just get in the boat at least. And we have abundance. This is beautiful. It says, goddess of abundance divine. Let me thrive. Let fortune be mine. So what is abundance? Abundance to me is growth. It's the abundance of a feeling. It's the abundance of something happening. And I feel that this boat literally is leading to this sunny energy here. It's leading towards some sort of light, some sort of maybe conclusion, the next phase, the next step of our lives. Maybe once we you know, get in this boat and we land somewhere else, we are going to have that clarity. We're no longer going to be in this confused energy. We're going to be more in this clarified mode where we know what we want to do. We um, have the energy to take care of things, to create abundance for ourselves, to create fortune, um, to just feel like we are really thriving. So, that salty, bitter energy isn't serving us. Cutting away, taking care of ourselves is the way at this time. So that is what we have. All right, let's get another. We have meditate. So we have Buddha's energy here, meditate. So it's time to maybe connect with your higher power by connecting with yourself, which leads to this enlightened energy. Okay, maybe we have been going, going for so long, very chaotic energy here, that now we're detaching from a lot of things that aren't really serving us, and we're taking the time to go within, and that's going to lead us to a more abundant life. I love that. Phoenix, so this is saying, how's that for a happily ever after? <laughs> so... What is this Phoenix energy? You can see the storm here, okay? You can see all that stormy energy. But what is the Phoenix? Phoenix is all about the Phoenix rising from the ashes, a resurrection, okay? Something coming from all of this chaos, this stormy energy. So there is something for us to kind of contemplate after, you know, we, we were in some sort of a situation for a reason. It wasn't for nothing. Sometimes that can feel a little um, disheartening when we go through something and we feel like it was a waste of time and it was for nothing. And it wasn't for nothing, you guys. There was a reason why you had to go through something here. There was a reason that you had to go through either some sort of darkness or some sort of just chaos or drama. Whatever that is, there was a reason for it. So try not to lose faith that you've just been thrown to the wolves just to, you know, survive and figure it out. You know, this is definitely telling you here that you, you went through something for a reason. There is a, there's a purpose behind it. And we have this seven of wands. Oh yeah. See there's, to me, this is some kind of a, of an energy of really feeling, um, 
like we've been left to our own devices. We've been left to defend ourselves, that we're alone. And I'm getting here from spirit that we were never alone. We were never alone. Spirit was always with us, but we may have turned away from spirit because we were going through some sort of traumatic situation. We were feeling very alone and isolated in our pain, but we're kind of at being asked to come back to our center. We're being, we're asked to being come back to our power place, which is within. Okay. Which is connecting with this higher presence here. So this very chaotic energy that to me looks like that drama and the drama of just life, the drama of pain. Sometimes we can create more drama out of situations and make things much more than they actually already are. And the reason we do this is because we have a lot of trauma and pain attached to things. So if someone hurts us, it's not that just their action was shitty. It was because it touches us deeply from an unhealed wound place. So then we project all of those wounds onto that situation and it feels just insurmountable. It feels like the floodgates have just opened up and we may even project all of our blame onto that person for just releasing the storm. But I'm getting here, it was a storm that was necessary to be unleashed because it helps us to look at it, examine it, and work with spirit in order to heal it, okay? Work with spirit in order to heal it. But if you guys feel guided to go outside of just this, I definitely recommend that because sometimes we need the help of a guide in physical form in order to help us get here. So if that's what you guys feel like you need to do, I definitely recommend doing that and following that advice for sure. Okay, we have something about storm here. There's something about a storm because it says strength and resilient, resilience now. What didn't kill you only made you stronger here. You're more resilient now because you went through what you went through. So very stormy energy here. You have what it takes. It's almost like now you've been given the tools on what to do. Now you're going to command the storms, the energies around you. You're not going to get caught up in the storm you're going to survive the storm next time because the, the storms and people and energy are always going to be there. You can't change that, but you can change yourself in the storm. You can change your own energy and how you react to the storm, the storms of life. We have love. So we have Aphrodite, I call to thee to bring a true love here to me. So some of you guys are being asked to be your own true love. All right, to be your own true love, to experience that true love with your higher power, and then everything else falls into place after that. If you can learn to be in this vibration of love with your, with your higher power, you will be in this energy within yourself and you will be able to find this energy in other people. So if things have been chaotic and stormy for you, we've got to start with ourselves. That's what we're being asked to do. Start with ourselves. Center ourselves first. The, the rest will come. Okay. And I know that that doesn't sound very exciting, but hard work and doing the right thing never is. The easy, quick fixes, that's, that's entertainment. That's fun. The do this and you'll get this real quick, quick answers, quick things. It doesn't last. So the hard work, the real genuine truth is can sometimes be ugly and sometimes unappealing, but that's when you know that it's right. <laughs> Quick shit, it's just, it doesn't last. So let's go ahead and get one final message here for whoever needs it. Ooh, we have Paul the Venetian, artistic expression. How many of you feel like there's something longing to be expressed in you? And it's not about needing to know how to paint or draw, okay? My daughter is a just fantastic artist. There are other people I know that it's just like, wow, you have a gift. I don't have that gift. I'm not artistic in that way, but I'm artistic in different ways. So 
whatever ideas that you have, whatever creative expressions are trying to make themselves known to you, we're being asked to do something with this. It's a gift for you to be shared. Everybody comes into this life with a gift. What is yours? We have sundress. Do it for you. I, love, I, I seriously love this so much because this is the deal. So many of us, and it's not downing people that do this. I'm speaking from my own personal experience when I say this. So many of us are trying to express ourselves, especially through social media. You've got your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok, and whatever else, okay? We're all trying to express ourselves in fun and creative ways. But when it becomes a have to, when it becomes whatever you're doing because you feel like you have to do it, and you're not even really having fun anymore, and you're doing it for just some other reason, that's when that energy can sometimes become depleting and it's no longer fun. And I've done this and I've gotten caught up in this before where I'm just putting out things just to put out things because I have to. And when I start feeling that drag when I start feeling that, ugh, I just, I really don't want to be doing this, but I know that this is what people want to see. This is when things can sometimes become just, just distorted, you know? And I'm not saying like, obviously if you're running a business, there's certain things that your audience is going to want to see, especially if you have membership and things like that, you're going to have to do things that are, you know, that you've promised, but when it comes to expressing yourself, if you're doing it right from the get-go to get um, notoriety or acceptance from your audience or, you know, you're, you're doing it to just, you know, be successful right in, in a moment, we're coming from a place that's not just true, authentic expression. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it to be accepted. We're doing it to be maybe adored or attention seeking or whatever's going on here. And sometimes that can work out, but when it doesn't, and if you're doing things for the wrong reasons, you're going to feel really down about it. You're going to feel immediately insecure. Like, why did I put that out there? Why did I say that? Why did I, you know what I mean? And like I said, I'm speaking from personal experience because there's been some things that I put out there that weren't received well. And it's like, well, why'd you put it out there? If, if it wasn't really authentically what you wanted to do, then why are you feeling insecure about it? Just do it. I tell my daughter this all the time. She's so artistic and there's lots of things that maybe people just don't get. Or maybe her type of art is not everyone's cup of tea. But who gives a shit at the end of the day? If you enjoy doing it, and do it. So right now I'm really pushing her to get back into doing things again because that's where her soul thrives is when she's just doing it for herself. It's not doing it to get business. It's not doing it to get followers. It's not doing it for any other reason except for this is something that you're a channel. You're a channel of your artistic expression. It's your gift to share. And if people don't like it, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it because that is what you feel good about. So anyways, I don't know, I just feel that message for some of you could resonate with what I've gone through and what my daughter goes through. Oh, I love this Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles is dedicated, you know? Stay dedicated. So I kind of feel like, you know, especially there's nothing wrong with wanting to run a business or make money you know, doing what you love to do. A lot of people would love to, you know, have their job be their purpose, you know, um, doing what they love to do. Nothing wrong with that at all. So I'm definitely seeing this with this Knight of Pentacles here. This is work. This is hard work and dedication. It takes time. It takes hard work sometimes to make things happen. So, but at the end of the day, I feel like the energy is telling us here, come from the place of doing it for yourself. If you're already in that mentality and that energy that you need to be a success overnight or that you need to be received well immediately or if people don't like what you're doing, it's not good, you're going to fail. 
you're go you're going to fail. You're not going to feel good. You're not going to have a good time with it. So it's it's about getting that energy from the get-go right out of the gate, being in this energy. The rest will follow. That's what I'm seeing here. It's kind of like the self-love. If you can get into that centered place with your higher power and be in that center of self-love, then the love that you're actually looking for is going to follow. If you can be in this very pure energy with your artistic expression and loving what you do, the rest will follow. So there's something about just being in the vibration that pure di uh, vibration from the get-go. And when we are in that vibration, then it's almost like life just flows, you know? Things work. Things make sense. Things are smooth. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but things feel good to you. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. If it feels good to you, then it really doesn't matter what else anybody thinks or what anybody else is doing, or how people, what they think about you. It's none of your business what other people think about you. It's like that book. What other people think about me is none of my business. And I could say that all day long like a mantra, and my wounds and my insecurities still do a number on my head from time to time. So I am not always in that vibration. It is difficult when you have unhealed issues that you're still working for not to get caught up in this, this stuff. You know what I mean? So I don't know if some of you guys are dealing with some of those stresses or dealing with feeling like you're afraid to put your stuff out there. Come from this place. When you come from this place, none of this other stuff matters. It just doesn't. Love that. What else? Ooh, we have earth magic. Okay, so some of you guys have some things that maybe you want to create in the physical world. That's the pentacle. That makes sense to me. So some of you guys want to uh, build something, you know, whatever your tools that you have. You can see this altar. She has all the tools that, you ne that she needs in order to create what she's wanting to create. And it's going to produce some sort of abundance in an earthly way. So either you're going to feel more grounded, you're going to feel more connected um, to earth and nature, or you're actually going to be using nature in order to create something, maybe products, or it's going to create physical, uh, tangible abundance and success. Again, it's not everything, but I feel like there's no reason why you can't do what you love to do. So I feel like some of you guys want to do something, turn your art, your craft into your work. And I'm seeing here that you have all the tools in order to make this happen, but it's kind of like you just have to stop holding yourself back. Come from a place of loving what you do, the rest will follow. That's it. And we have oh, the best possible decision. So we have Artemis, goddess of, of the bow. Help me see what must be known. You see this? So what must be known right now is that you have some sort of talent and gift that needs to be expressed. So the best possible decision that you can make is just do it already. That's it. Come from a place of just loving what you do. The rest will follow. What other people think doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's what you it's what you're feeling and experiencing. It's not a selfish, self-centered, you know, way of thinking. It's just if you're in with one with the universe, you're you're with one with your creator, you detach from all this crap that is holding you back in life, that's keeping you small, that's keeping you from not making the decisions that you want to make. So I hope that this resonates with somebody today. I love that. I'm taking a lot of these messages for myself as well. There was a lot of uh, nice little snacks there. So anyways, you guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and um, you guys take care and I will catch you guys next time in the next reading. All right, bye-bye.